Well, hello everyone. Uh, so we we just got another update for the EA Sports PGA Tour. Uh, this time's for the FedEx Cup playoffs with the new course Olympia Fields, which is the BMW Championship this year, where it's going to be at. Uh, so I thought we'd just kind of go over the course and a little history of this tournament and what it used to be. Um, that said, uh, going a little blindly, haven't played it yet. Um, I actually don't know much about Olympia Fields, even though it's actually not far from me. I live in the Chicago area. Um, uh, I do know it's a very good, like, it's a well-known, you know, private club. You know, it's been around a long time. Um, and I think they've had it a few years ago. Like, they've been to Chicago several times with the BMW Championship. And basically, like, well... With the BMW Championship, they move around a bit. Um, originally, it was going to originally start in Chicago when they created the event for the FedEx Cup playoffs. It was at Cod Kill. Um, Cod Kill, of course, four, which is called Dub Shred. You know, Dub Shred, apologize for mispronouncing that a little bit. Now, from Olympia Fields Country Club. Um, Brooke, I want to hear the announcer, and then we'll get back into it. Chicago. This is EA Sports coverage of PGA Tour Golf. With Frank Navalo by my side, I'm Rich Lerner. Frank, as weekend golfers know, there's always part of your game that you're focused on. So I'll ask the question, what are you going to be looking at here today? Tee to green, Rich. I, I know people always say putting's important. I'm not going to say it's overrated. I'm going to turn them down a bit. I was hoping it has some more. Like, they do for, like, the majors, but the... Let me rephrase that. The, the commentary's been good, but I sometimes, like, they'll have more unique stuff, I would say, like... You know, talking about, you know, Hoya Lake for World Liverpool or like LA Country Club for the US Open. Um, so this is kind of like a first, I, I don't know if you want to call it a regular course. I don't think they'd be right to, to say that. It's just, uh, but it's not a major. You know, this is the first non-major course they've added, let's say that. Uh, but I was saying, yeah, I'm going right a bit. Anyway, as I was saying, um, it used to, when they, when they created the BMW Championship, um, they were hosting it at Cog Hill for Dove Shred. Now, the reason for that, the root of this tournament used to be the Western Open. Um, it's an organization like called the you know, Western Golf Association runs this tournament. Still does today, but for a long time they were running the uh, Western Open under the old schedule format before they induced the playoffs. I think it was in 06, 07 they, was the first iteration. Uh, so they always went to Cog Hill for a long time. Uh, but when the playoffs were kind of, you know, this whole thing, they decided to do a renovation for Cod Kill 4. And understandably, I mean, it, it was probably a long time since they touched that course. Uh, but when they did, we did the renovation, a lot of the pros did not like it. And it's ironic, it's, it's it was known to be a very hard course, you know, at least for the, the setup for the pro, you know, for the for the event. So that kind of turned people, that kind of turned some of the pros off. But also, I think, I, I, I won't lie, I'm not entirely sure why the, you know, how they kind of resorted to making this probably the only, let's say, only event on the current tour that I know of that kind of moves around each year. You know, like, they have new events that come on and old events will leave. But, I mean, like, the actual same event, the b and Championship, move around the country a bit. But I digress. Um, they basically, you know, they, they decided to move it away from Cogco 4, which is kind of a shame. It's a nice place. They actually got four courses, and one and three is really reasonable price. You know, it's like, you know, 40, 50 bucks a part most times for 18 holes. You know, it's an, and they're old courses, you know, that, that first course has been there since the early 20s. Obviously, it's been probably done, redone a couple times, but, you know, there's a lot of history there, and they got old pictures of, you know, inside the clubhouse and where the little bar is of, like, Tiger Woods and stuff when he's won there. So there's a lot of history, but that being made, you know, the, 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 when they redid the renovations and redid the layout, and a lot of people did not, you know, the pros didn't like it. And it honestly ended up being kind of controversial, so it's just kind of a shame how it turned out. But but with that, they ended up decided to start moving the BMW Championship. And they and they come back to Chicago quite a bit because the Western Golf Association that runs it is based here. But they've actually gone to other states. They went to Delaware last year, which is in this game. Um, they've been to uh, Indianapolis. They're going to St. Louis in, a, I think, two or three years where they had the PGA Championship uh, a couple years ago. So, so some really, you know, it kind of, I actually kind of like it. It's kind of nice to move around. When they've been to Chicago, they've been to Medina, which is host to the PGA Championship. Um, 
I, I know they've been to Olympia Fields. I just can't remember the last time they were there. Um, I know they went to, I think it's Kemper Lakes. I believe it's Kemper Lakes. I might have confused that with, they had the Women's PG Championship in North Chicago before too. And they've also had the BMW up there once as well. The one I've been to the BMW. I've been to both actually, but um, anyway. So, so yeah, they kind of, instead of rotated around a bit, like they're at, actually they're at Medina here in 2020, but obviously COVID, no one, wants, no one, you know, no one besides the pros and the staff. We're able to attend that tournament. It's a shame because I've been wanting to see Medina so bad. Just, uh, you know, no opportunities, unfortunately, when it came to any public events. Uh, but with Olympia Fields, you know, as I said, I don't know too much. I know it's an older course. As you saw, it's been around, you know, 100 years now. Um, it's in the south side of Chicago, actually. It's pretty far south. Um, not, yeah, you know, I'd say probably, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes from Indiana's border. You know, just, you know, it's kind of like straight south. Um, if you look at like the map, I think it's off like 294. I think it's near Homewood, Illinois. Um, so it's kind of down there, you know. And that's a nice, you know, it's kind of like an older. Def it's an interesting area. It, it's definitely like parts of it feels like very rich. Other parts of it feels like old blue collar, but definitely nice areas. You know, nice neighborhoods and suburbs down there that've been around for a good, you know, 100 plus years. Um, I can tell you so far, like my early impression of this course and. The way I'm going to say it, it's nothing negative, but it's like, it definitely reminds me of definitely a Chicago Midwest Parkland course. You know, it's got, yeah, and especially this, this is obviously a private club and hosting major, you know, a big event. So you can kind of see, okay, the fairways are narrow, but there's got plenty of rough on the side. You know, there's quite a few courses I've seen that up here. Um, not all, like some, some would be like narrow fairway and they put like a line of trees on each side so that way they can like have the hole next door and you know put a little buffer there basically but of course i have a little breathing room like that i've seen that where okay they got a nice little you know decent sized fairway you know narrow you can call it narrow or not you know, su you know, uh, you know subjectively but then it's like okay well we'll keep it open but it'd be more like rough and it'd be kind of like thick roughs you know especially in nicer courses i played at up here and then like and i could tell being like an older course and i've seen this also a lot of the decent courses in chicago See, it's kind of like a little valley, and it kind of goes up the hill down here. You know, surrounded by bunkers. It's very, it's very common up here. And, you know, a couple reasons for that is uh, one, like, you know, Chicago is not, it's not a hilly area. It's, it's a, you know, most of Illinois is very flat. So, you know, they got a lot of these mounds and stuff, and try to create a little elevation change as they can, and it works. Like, there's quite a few. Like, there's a course around here I like called Schomburg Golf Club. You know, it's a it's a municipal course, but it's nice. It's got 27 holes and you know, a Parkland style that kind of looks like this a bit. I'm sure this is nicer being a very you know well-known private club, but you know, you get the idea. And it's got like, okay, you hit like down the hill. They kind of hit you know over a creek or like. Okay, you're in the fairway, but it's a slightly elevated green, not crazy like a Donna Ross, but you know where it's like if you're short, it's gonna roll back a bit. And they usually put a couple bunkers in the front to kind of protect it a bit. So you know, kind of make it really interesting. Oh, I thought that was in. So I was like, I, I was like, come on. I actually played a course last night called Village. I think it's kind of similar. It's like there's a par three. It's like. It's weird, it kind of dips a little bit, like, it's like a little, not like a valley, like a can or anything, but it like dips in and comes back up, where I hit the green slightly above your tee box, so you gotta hit it sort of, you know, uphill from the tee box, and they got bunkers in the front, which is kind of like an elevated green from the way it dips in, you know, kind of like, you know, the little fairway up into the green, so it's kind of like, you know, the, you see you see quite a few of those types of shots in the Chicago area. And, and likely other parts of the Midwest that are like, you know, built inland and, the, you know, this parkland style. Uh, you know, especially because, like, again, with, as I said, you know, it's it's very flat in Illinois when the glaciers went through here. You know, they basically just kind of kept the area very, you know, they basically didn't dry. They didn't stop until they got to the Ozarks of Missouri and Arkansas and then, where they where it's all cliffs and rocky and stuff. So, so you kind of make do with the land you got. But... A lot of them are, but I will say, a lot of them are very pretty. You know, they a lot of the good ones, like you can tell in this one, you know, good, like, like it looks like it's in a forest, not, but they put like a deep tree covers around, like over there in the side. It's like feels like a park, but it feels like a little forest there with bushes and stuff. 
you know, on the, uh, you know, straight ahead and on the left. So it's a nice little mix of stuff. And, you know, if you're offline a bit, I mean, it, it's going to punish you. I mean, it punishes anyone I golf with. Uh, yeah, should be a little more. That's a decent size green. It's not bad. Just a little past the hole. Look here at birdie. And players have a option to take. It is interesting, though, when I was thinking about this compared to Delaware, um, that was last year's event that's in this game. It's Delaware had a lot more elevation changes, where this one's a little more flat, which I kind of expected being in the Chicago area. I will say the nice thing, though, um, I, I, for me, it's hard to walk 18. It, it's a lot of stats, but yeah, I do like walking nine and a lot of the course, even with like the slopes and stuff. It, it's a nice walk, you know. You get a little challenge with some slopes and hills, um, but then it's like. But you're not going up and down and it feels like mountains or anything. Like, I know, like, when I grew up in mid Missouri, I mean, some of these courses is, like, the car path is, like, it, the car path is almost going down, like, a 45-degree angle. Like, you feel like on, a, like on a roller coaster. It's, like, insane. I can't imagine I'm trying to walk that. You know, let's, uh, let's see if we can get it over here. But yeah, here's another example, like, you know, kind of, especially with older courses in, like, parts of Midwest. And I would say, like, out east and so forth. You know, you got a lot of tree cover, but it's very narrow. Like, you think about this. Like, you don't have a lot of room for air if you're going right or left. So, like, for me, if I'm pushing that ball right, not, not like, my, my avatar golf, I mean, like, in real life, then it's probably going to be in the trees. Ooh, good. Just enough. I get a little bounce there. I kind of like this little bunker here, like, you know, and granted, it, 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 let, it, let me put it this way, like, for the pros, it's probably not going to be super in play, it's probably going to prevent some of the deep bombers, you know, but, but like, for the average golfer, yeah, because like, okay, like, they can duff it into that bunker from here, you know, I've seen that happen all the time, so it's like, and then like, you know, but let's say, uh, you had a bad tee shot in the woods, and like, well, I can't reach the green, I'm gonna lay it up, and you gotta be mindful of that bunker there. It's actually a pretty cool bunker. Unfortunately, it's one of those bunkers is probably not gonna be, you know, in play too much with all the pros, stuff preventing the bombers, and honestly, if you're a bomber in that hole, I would just, you know, I would be a little more, you know, conservative with my shot, honestly. Just to be, you know, just be mindful, that way you just, if you're more active at three wood, you know, in terms of getting the fairway, then I would work on that than worrying about, like, you know, trying to bomb it down here. Onto the sixth tier on this North course, and finally it's the first of our four par threes, checking in at 187 yards. This hole is much more out in the open than the previous six, but that also means that wins can sometimes play a bigger role here. So, okay, so that's a little, little unique dialogue. That's good. I'm glad they've been adding unique dialogue of each course, which I think adds a lot, in my view. Um, the wind will be interesting. Like, this is not off the lake, so you aren't going to get, like, wind that you would see at Whistling Straits off Lake Michigan or some of the courses that are really close, you know, to the lakefront in Chicago. But there's always a, you know, there's a decent amount of breeze in the suburbs. Like, you know, as I say, this course is not super far from me. It's probably only, like, 20-ish miles but it's like straight south, so a lot of the, you know, weather and climate ain't going to vary too much. And, you know, there's usually, you know, not every time. Like, we, we had our humid, stagnant days, which might happen because this is in August. You know, when it's going to be playing at. But, like, there can be a good amount of breeze sometimes. Like, you know, and it'd be like a good, you know, not like a, a you know, like 20-mile winds, but a good 5-10 mile wind. And, yeah, and when you have these wide open holes, I've seen the ball carry, you know, weirdly, you know, it's like, it'll push it right a bit or left, and especially, you know, especially like, if you're not, you know, not like a pro that knows how to do shot making, you know, where they're very in tune of how they're swing and hold the club and they, it, it impacts like, you know, adding a draw or a fade to their shots. One thing though, whoa, wait, 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 I gotta wait till the next hole. Ever 
ever so slightly to the left and features bunkers left and right off the tee. That's kind of cool, like all these bunkers out there. So it's kind of, Mitch, it's kind of more straight, but at the same time, it's like if you're offline a bit, and, and this is where the challenge of this is going to come, at least for like, yeah, you know, the average person from a design standpoint. Like, like okay, example when you do your power drive, you're less accurate. So that's how there's quite a few courses in this game. At least the power drive, even like in the fairway, it would almost that whole cone would be still in the fairway. Here, almost like we say about 35, 40 percent of the cone is out of bound, you know, out either in the rough or in the sand. Even this one, which is more accurate, this is your best chance, honestly. Um, and you get some breeze, it's going to push that ball too. Yeah, that's still a little, little, little draw. Excuse me. Oh, I was trying to see here. I don't really see it. Oh no. It's gonna. Look, I'm gonna be. It's gonna look really. Ah, uh, okay. Never mind. So the BMW, which unfortunately this game I haven't seen too much, but the BMW, I think they put like little miniature cars, like, like you know, like the. The T's or, or sorry, in the T box, so like that black ball, it's like a little miniature B and W car. You know, it's kind of cool. Like it's like, yeah, you know, this would do the FedEx St. Jude and do like a little FedEx truck. You know, so it's always kind of cool when they do a little stuff like that. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, no, 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 I know. Always over swing anyway. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I was kind of talking earlier about the whole Western um, Open. But yeah, so that before the BMW Championship, its roots was the Western Open. And it was uh, it was actually one, it's actually, it's weird, let me rephrase that. They still, they still call this the oldest event, like, like they call it the oldest event and you know an ongoing event on the PGA Tour right now, and that I disagree when they use that because it's really like the, it's not even called the Western Open. It's called the BMW Championship. The Western Open is mostly in Chicago and it's basically almost a hundred year history. I mean it's founded like around the early 1900s. I mean like night in like night before 1910, and then it basically went away around you know 19 you know 2007 basically and, and the calling it like the oldest like to me that it was the western that was the oldest like with the you know with the current version it's a playoff event like the western was an open I know there were amateurs in it I believe you know usually a couple once you know exemptions um, and it was like even like one time they called it like the like the un like an unofficial major, which you know I think that's gotten thrown around a lot over the years. So I, you know it's like, but it, it had like usually. Ooh. Yeah. Didn't plan that well. So I knew a driver so it would just roll off. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> but it but it wasn't a tour. It was really well known to get a lot of good fields. You know like. You know, Tiger Woods won it multiple times. I think Jack Nicholas did. I actually got a couple lists. Um, but normally it was usually one of the best fields every year, you know, for, you know, in terms of like a regular event, not like a non-major, you know. Because, like, obviously the majors and other players, you know, they, they will get, you know, truly the best of the fields now. But, not, but it was basically kind of like, you know, one of those, it was definitely like a tournament that a lot of the best golfers show up for. I can't believe that went in. So yeah, the first was established 1899, uh, Western Golf Association. Last one was in 06. Tiger Woods has the aggregate score. I tied with Scott Hodge. I'm not familiar with him. There you go, Trevor Millen's won it. He's got a Masters. Jim Furyk, he's a Hall, he'll be a Hall of Famer if he's not already. I think Nick Price, Hall of Fame, Ben Crenshaw, it's one two major, you know, two masters. You know, Tom Kite, Tom Watson, multiple major winners won, you know, the Western Open. 
I guess Jack Nicholas did not win it. Tom Watson has. No, no, here it is. Jack Nicholas, 68. 67. Back to that Billy Casper. You know, he's won a he's won it three times. No, four. Maybe even a fifth one. Hard to say. I'm just browsing through the list. Um, Arnold Palmer's one. So, there you go. You, that gives you a sense of the history there. You know, a brief sense of how big this tournament was. Like, you know, the fact that, you know, Jack Nicholas won a couple times. Tom Watson's won a few times. You know, like, a lot of these, like, well-known golfers, all Hall of Famers, basically, have played, well, not this particular course, there's mostly a Cog Hill, but came to Chicago for this event. And Tiger Woods is like, you know, as I mentioned earlier. So it just shows you that, you know, like, there was a lot of history here. And thankfully, when they did create the, I, I think what happened when they did decide to create the playoffs, they basically knew the Western Association has been, the Western Golf Association has been such a P partner running these events in Chicago and you know a long term history decided to make them like okay we'll give you the second leg of we're, well now second but originally the third leg of the playoffs you know it's like the last event every year and then you know over, as I mentioned earlier over time you know they started moving the tournament around a bit and so forth but at least like I, I just disagree calling the oldest run event I think the reason they do that because the western you know the organization that's still running it um, but that said, you know, at least, like, they're still involved. They do a lot for the Evans Scholars, actually, like, this event. Raise a lot of money for the Evans Scholars. And I think it's, like, you know, scholarships and, you know, just trying to help with, you know, you know recognizing, you know, people who excel in college academia. So, um, but, yeah, it's kind of cool, you know. And I think they also run, like, another... I, there's been a corn fairy tournaments up here too, which I think they've run as well or have won. And then they run also like um, other golf tournaments, you know, the Western Junior, Western Amateur. I'm reading this real quick. N5, here you go. N5 Invitational presented by Old National Bank on the corn fairy. Yeah, so they also run a corn fairy event. So yeah, they're very active. You know, long term partners with the with the professional golf tours to you know bring professional golf and also promote amateur golf here in Chicago or in the Chicago region. But they also, as I said, with the B and Debbie, they moved that around a bit. Yeah, but overall, I like this course. It, it definitely reminds me a lot of the courses I play around the area. Yeah, definitely the parkland feel. I mean, I put it this way. I guess this is where it gets a little complicated. I get with these parkland type courses you see here, or like, you know, I'd say throughout the Midwest, but it's like really around the country, like. They're really nice, like they are, but also like, like for a lack of better way, it's like you could probably, if I start picking random holes, let's say here or TPC Deer Run, sign this game was in 2K or, or a TPC Twin Cities, and just throw them all on here. It's hard at first to know which is which is which because they're all very similar. They're all these parkland and look, and to be fair, that's golf. Like golf can only. You know, it's like it's like a football field. Well, not the best comparison, but but I put it this way: like you gotta look at where you are and what you can do and what makes sense in this area. I mean, you look at like a lot of parts of the country. You know, they're inland. You know, wooded like this. So you gotta make do with what you know, with, you know, with the woods. Add slow. It's bunkers. You know, usually not the deepest, but you know, add a little elevation, change it a little deep, and you gotta work around there. Or, small greens that might be like an oval like this one or a circle add some slants so but then it makes you appreciate let's say you know i would say like you know like pebble beach or you know which is like you know so gorgeous or even like the you know, like saint andrews or you know world liverpool in this game where it's like okay you know we're off the sea now we have a lot more variation uh what we typically will see you know let's say you know like this parking style but that says nothing like wrong with this. Like it looks, you know, it looks nice. I like the challenge here with some of these bunker placements and stuff. Um, definitely a little, well, I would say unique. It depends on the course, but but definitely adds a next challenge. Like here, definitely it's got like that slanted green where you got to be mindful where your ball lands, because otherwise it'll just kind of roll off. You know, if you're not careful. See, and that's what's nice when you're a pro. You get all these like books and stuff, you know, that show you that. You know, as an amateur, you kind of go for the middle, and then you watch it roll off because you realize the pen's like sitting on a, like a 30 degree angle. I 
will say these putts are fun. It's like you always wonder, like just a little off. If you get it. Oh man, I pushed it. Now I see now when it, there's quite a few holes like I've seen like in Chicago like I love these holes because they you know you can't overpower like I, I like variety and that's the one thing I'll say I haven't seen this course and some of the nicer courses in the Chicago that we have gotten to play they do variety it's like okay we might have some like long par threes but straight we might have a long you know like a par four that's pretty straight but might be short so you can try and bomb it up there and see if you can wedge it on but here it's like you know, you're at a, you, you have no chance of getting to the green. The trees are tall enough, they're going to block the drives. And so you kind of need to go down and almost like lay it up. But you got to like, okay, what's my best chance of laying up? And they got a bunker there that's pretty well placed. So, you know, thankfully, you know, in this game, pros are going to... The more I get over it. But, the, you know, if you're off a little bit, you're in the bunker there. You know, and if you try to bomb the driver, you know, it might roll too much into the creek and then it's gone. Yeah, a little off of trying to figure out the elevation change. This we're getting on. So now this right around 25 feet for birdie. Yeah, so it's interesting. So this is considered the easiest hole. It's pretty straight, pretty open. It's just basically if you're off line a bit, then it just comes down to those bunkers. Yeah, I mean, these guys are probably turned up. But again, yeah, if you're off, it always comes out of being offline a bit. But it's kind of nice. Like, you go from, like, a very tough hole to, you know, something I would say that's more manageable. Even though I did burden last hole with, like, a 325 foot putt. I didn't realize this. I like they got these little creeks and stuff running around the course. It's really beautiful. I like this one. They got the little woods and stuff. I am curious. So I'm actually going to Sunday's round next week here. I'm curious where some of these stands are. That's actually like pretty accurate the will be or not because it looks like it doesn't make sense in this hole. Okay, that'll sit there. Yeah, so some of it might over over hit into the creek. Oh, that's kind of easy. You're uphill, but we got the wind, so I'm gonna try and play that a bit. Oh, 
I'll just probably drive it down here. But yeah, I kind of see it. I think this is going to be a really nice course next week. So hopefully it won't be too humid and the weather holds up. But yeah, definitely narrow. Definitely definitely an old school course, which I like. I like these courses. And as I mentioned, like, the thing with some of the parking lot, I will say, and it was harsh, but it's like, my view is like, you can sometimes it's hard to tell which is which. But there's still its own beauty and fun to it. Like, this one I can tell, like, it's about the narrow and just making sure your shots are placed in a good... Well, yeah, let's just let's just be safe. So, um, anyways, the same. You know, nothing. You know, so nothing like. You know, it's not like Pebble Beach being off cliffs or stuff, or like, you know, you know, the Open Championship with, you know, super wide fairways and rolling hills. But it's like, okay, it's a nice little parkland course. You know, you see some deep bunkers. I mean, I would say the thing is, it's really about... Well, you can say I have a lot of courses. You can say it with some courses, but it was quite a few. But here I can definitely tell it's more about being mindful where your ball is going or where you're trying to go. Like here, I'm looking at this like, okay, so that green tilts to the right. So the ball is going to roll a little bit to the right. So it's like, okay, I'm trying to be mindful. Yeah, especially because I think... Green. You know, maybe okay. some pros are going to actually try to aim over to the right of the pin, so they're aiming hitting below, they're below the, you know, below the hole, so they can putt upwards a lot easier than trying to deal with slopes going downhill or trying to, like, hit it, you know, at an angle like this. That was a good, it was a good, it was a good streak. You know, I'm trying to think about this. There aren't many courses in this game that has creeks. Like, there's, I mean, there's Arna Palmer, which has the lake, and then a couple creeks. Obviously, you know, Augusta, but then it's like, you know, I don't have that with, you know, the uh, Open Championship. Uh, I didn't have that really at all at the U.S. Open either last year or this year. Um, you did have, like, valleys where you, you know, it's kind of out of bounds. I uh, don't have that TPC, you know, waste management. Yeah, so it's kind of nice to see some creeks and stuff. I like that. Well, yeah, that's a, yeah, because you get, well, I say Midwest, but. Like, I, I remember playing a deer run. You kind of had that deer run by like, creek, and then, like, yeah, there's a couple holes that's off the river. Yeah, I like that. It's like, you know, it's a really beautiful, you know, in my view, it's very beautiful, like, to see that. Oh, I'm hugging the left. Yeah, it's in the rough. Yeah, I like this. See, like this is yeah, this creek's kind of run rolling around the course. It's really nice, but it kind of it's in play though. Like you think about it, you know, if you're slicing, you know, your drive here. You have like no room for error here. Like look at this. If you're slicing, then you're in that creek. And if you're left, you're under a tree, or you you, know, you got bunkers there. So it's kind of yeah. This this is kind of neat. I like this back nine quite a bit. I think it it really makes it interesting the back nine here. From what I'm seeing. And, and it should be fair. When I was talking about the whole parkland thing one more time, like this is how you make it interesting. You know, you got stuff like creeks if you can do it. You know, obviously the bunker place, so that's a really good one, almost went in there. Like, that's how you make this, like, inland courses interesting, you try to get creative with these designs. Like here, I'm going to draw this in a bit, because that tree is kind of overlooking the fairway bit, it's kind of blocking my shot.
Oh yes, yeah, so pond near the 18. I've seen quite a few of those up here. Yeah, but overall I like this course. This is nice. It's a nice little. I say it's a little. Oh, oh, right. It's it, it's a it's a beautiful like old school parkland course. That's the best way to put it. And honestly, we kind of we could use a couple more of those in this game. Like, I say Brookline is a good one. You know, very old school from the year, you know, late 19th century. You know, Pebble Beach is a good mix of parkland and then Link style. I mean, LACC, I, I guess that's a good park play, but that's, that's just kind of a unique one. I, I just, I don't know why, I was disappointed in LACC. This is the way that turn played out. Like, playing the course here is definitely interesting. A little hot here. Um, it just didn't play as interesting as you thought it would. Like, they have the women's, U.S. Women's Energy Championship this week at Bel Air, and that looks like a much more interesting course than... LACC did. Uh, I don't see it, but let's just try it out. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This is actually gonna go in. It's doing the super slow. Catch it this try on video, but yeah, so that's uh, yeah, so that's basically the North Course Olympia Fields. Uh, what we'll do before we end the video, we'll go check the course out. I, I do love this thing here, yeah, this thing's great. I, yeah, this thing's kind of get a sense here. Um, you know, what I might do see if they got anything on the website with this, otherwise, we'll just kind of go through here. But yeah, you see, you know, it's really. As you see, you can, it's really about your shot placements with these courses, and that's what you have to do. Like, like the link style, it's like okay, we have wind in play, or the oceans in play, or like go to like uh, Pinehurst, which is going to be the US Open next year. It's and you know that's definitely in the woods, you know, with these big pine trees, but it's like sandy dunes. So it's like if you're offline, it's about all this sand and pine straw. But when it comes to these courses like here, there's no pine straw or not much of it. it might be a little in some of the you know, in the woods, but it's like it's about thick rough, you know, like, you know, having these firm, narrow fairways and then having bunker placements in really in tight spots that that can funnel that 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 would be like a percentage of shots can easily end up there. I did find that one interesting, like I like that bunker placement, so it kinda of really spices it up if you're offline a bit on the right or left. And get me mindful that you can end up in that bunker in front of the green with the little fairway. Yeah, see the par threes. But see, it's like this one. Like, you know, if you can hit it really far, then you might cut the corner over the bunkers and land there. You know, or you try to go straight, then kind of straight in. But then you see that, you know, the favorite pretty much ends right before the green. And you got those two bunkers, and it's you know, kind of in the right place. This one I liked a lot. Like when the creek, yeah, it's interesting. I think the creek, yeah, there's a creek here and here. But in the back nine, the creek really comes into play the last like five, six holes, and I like that a lot. Yeah, so there's the, you know, white silver tournament. You know, red's up there. But yeah, you, you know, and remember it's like it was pretty tight because you have the trees and creek, so it's kind of like landing it. But if you go a little too straight, you know, you gotta be careful getting in that bunker easily. Yeah, another one. I apologize. Creeks in play. Nice lawn dog. But yeah, I, I like this course. Yeah, I like the creek. That was really cool. I think that's a nice little touch. So, 
So yeah, I'm excited for this. I, I can't wait. You know, right now I got the uh, currently, you know, we got the FedEx. Or sorry, not the FedEx Cup. The FedEx St. Jude is ongoing right now. So the next week's the BNW, and there's only one more update after this, and that will be the, uh, you know, the Ryder Cup's going to be in here, or at least the the course. We'll see if they have the full Ryder Cup tournament or not. That'd be kind of interesting. So, um, oh, hold on a second. Uh, Yeah, so it's interesting. It's this course fit, it means you need more power. I think it's more about, like, really about, I, I say it's more about your approach. You know, you know, like short game, yeah, putting, you know, that helps. Short game, yeah, I say, yeah, the driving and power is a part of it. Oh, I guess power driving, so I guess my driving is good enough. Yeah, so it's really, to me, it is about the approach. Like, it's really about approaching your short game in this course you know just be in the right spots and you're gonna have a good chance to shoot low and you can say of any you know in general but it's like this course doesn't really give you free like some courses like you know like Pebble Beach or not Pebble Beach sorry like St. Andrews you know you got really wide open fairways okay you can be offline a bit and still be in the fairway or okay the approach in the green here it's like you're offline you're in the woods or a creek or something like there's no room for forgiveness so, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the little video. Just kind of keep it short and sweet. So, uh, otherwise, take care.